makers of Camel Cigarettes present Dick Powell as Richard Diamond, private detective. to this convincing proof of camel mildness. Hundreds of men and women from coast to coast smoke only camels for 30 days. Every week, leading throat specialists made thorough examinations of their throats. The throat specialists reported not one single case of throat irritation due to smoking camels. Start your own 30-day camel mildness test. Let your throat tell you how mild camels are day after day. Then you'll know why Camel is by far America's most popular cigarette. Here transcribed is Richard Diamond, Private Detective, starring Dick Powell. Busy day for the Humane Society. Oh, what a beautiful morning. Oh, what a... Hmm, music critic. Diamond Detective Agency, we solve all crimes, we frown on sin, but the weather is awful and we'd rather stay in. Who wouldn't? Oh, hi, Helen. Hi. Did you like that slogan? Yeah. It gives me an idea. I want to report a crime. Well, hide the body till tomorrow, dear. It's raining. You can lose your license with an attitude like that. Oh, baby, you certainly know where I'm ticklish. Where's the crime? You're still single. So am I. Well, in your case, that is a crime. In mine, it's just a misdemeanor. Anyway, I can't discuss an assignment I'm still working on. I'll help you solve it. I want to give myself up. Sorry, no case. Why not? I've seen you in an evening dress. Nobody could pin anything on you. Would it interest you to know the piano tuner is here and very good looking? Uh, 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 pulling wires will get you nowhere. Is my picture still on the piano? The one where I look like a tough detective? No, I threw it in the fireplace. Mm. I love to sit by the fire and dream of you. Besides, oh, is it thunder down there? Yeah, small world, isn't it? I've got to hang up, dear. I've got work to do. Well, come over tonight. You can try the piano and my patience. What work have you got to do? I have to fill my lighter and dry my shoes. What are you talking about? I smashed my car up in a collision and had to walk to work. <laughs> work, he says, smiling through his tears. Where's your car now? In Larson's garage. You need a rich wife who can give you a chauffeur. Hang up, doll. You're getting too near my prize. Bye. Bye. <laughs> I looked at the door, hoping a wealthy client with an easy case would walk in. When that Connecticut car with a lemon-headed driver folded my fenders an hour before, I knew I was in for a repair job that would spring my bill clip. So I called the garage to see whether I should start saving up for it or just jump out of the window. Larson's garage. Larson? Diamond speaking. How does it look? Eh, it looks like you're going to be a pedestrian for about three weeks, Mr. Diamond. But it ain't all bad. The frame's out of line only a couple inches. Save the silver lining for the brake drums, Junior. You never call me Mr. Diamond unless there's going to be more than $100. How much, roughly? Oh, oh, I'd say 250 I said roughly, not brutally. Anyway, why are you calling me up, Diamond? Didn't your guy tell you? My guy? Yeah, the big boy you sent over to get your stuff out of the car. Wait a minute. Did he say I sent him... Hang up, Diamond. Stop talking and hang up. Uh, have a chair, friend. Be with you in a moment. Larson, was this guy of mine a thick-set, moronic-looking oaf with a greasy hat and a broken nose? The next one is through your ears, Diamond. Hang up! I'll talk to you later, Larson. I mean, Larson. I just heard a report that requires my attention. Do you realize, friend, that you made a big hole in my waste basket? I suppose I wanted to fill it with water to wash my hair. How could Shut I... Up! Where is it? I said, where is it? Talk! 
You told me to shut up. You can't have it both ways. Friend, I've had a bad morning. My car is smashed up, and my feet are wet, and things look bad in Egypt. As the old song says, I love a charade, but not this much. Don't play cozy. Stop in your car. Oh. Well, now, let me think. There was a box of cleansing tissues in the glove compartment. Some golf clubs in the trunk. Probably some hairpins down behind the seat. I've told that girl a hundred times. After the wreck. After the wreck. Everybody was throwing stuff back in the car. We want the brown envelope. Brown envelope? Friend, I never saw it. No. Scout's honor. See, I'll cross my hive Keep and... your hands down. Homicide, Lieutenant Levinson speaking. Rick Walt, get over here right away. I'm busy. You better get over here. I've done it again. There's a dead man in my office. What? Just get over here and bring me a new wastebasket. Yeah, I know him. Paul Scannell, hoodlum, third class. Car stripper, nightclub bouncer, Central Park mugger, and manic depressive about town. Last arrest two years ago. They didn't want him for anything right now. You could have had him for assaulting wastebaskets. Who was he with? I don't know. He's been out of circulation. What makes you think he was with anybody? Plural, personal pronoun. He said, we want the envelope. You and your education. Hmm. You had not been a little faster than he was. You'd be getting your doctor's degree right now. Incidentally, uh, were you expecting something? Only the usual things, death and taxes. Two men with whiskers, why? Wearing your clavicle gun in the office on a character. Comfort-loving type. A shrewd observation, Walter. And it was. Normally, I'd have shucked the gun the minute I got in the office. When my car got hit, the pistol was knocked out of the clip under the dash, so I stuck at my shoulder holster. There were six police officers and 1,300 helpful citizens on the scene, and I didn't want to linger for extra questions. I told Walt about Scannell going through my car at Larson's garage. He looked thoughtful, and when Walt looks thoughtful, he's thinking. The police force could use a lot of Levinson's. Brown envelope with murder in it. Rick, there's more of this than a traffic brawl. What did you bring here from the scene? Just my wet feet and my briefcase. The one I always carry to make me look businesslike. You couldn't look businesslike if you carried a cash register. Look, let's let's reconstruct a little. Take it from the crash. Okay, okay. Slippery streets. A gray coupe with Connecticut plates came barreling through the stoplight. I tried to get over, but there was a curbstone in a 30-story office building in the way. Remind me to write my congressman about the real estate lobby. You mention my name, you'll get a nasty answer. Go on, will you? Well, uh, we smacked. You mean you didn't hear it? Only 24 blocks away? Oh, sure, but I thought it was just another atom bomb. Hmm. Well, four doors flew open, two on my car, two on the gray coupe, stuff all over the street. Papers, spare parts, broken glass, my bridge work, the usual debris. While the other driver and I were exchanging information on insults, a few warm-hearted bystanders, seeing there's nothing worth stealing, threw the stuff back into the cars. Mine was all the way to the garage. How about the other fellows? The other fellow was a girl. <laughs> Well, you may say so, officer. Platter of goodies. Friendly, too, in a nervous sort of way. You'll uh, get a name and address? Certainly. You think I'm an idiot? I um, can't answer that without breaking up a beautiful friendship. Uh, where's the data? Uh, uh, the stuff is in my briefcase. Where's the briefcase? In my desk. And don't ask me where the desk is. You're sitting on it. Yeah. Give me a take. What a mess. Reminds me of my wife's handbag. I wouldn't know. I've never been in your wife's handbag. Mr. Diamond, this is business. Shall we examine the contents of the briefcase? Pray do. Thank you. Item, paperback book. A weekend painter. Planning on painting a weekend? Man's entitled to a hobby if he ever gets time for it, which he doesn't. Item, notebook, black. Keep out of that. Killjoy. Item, book of matches, no printing. Item, clip of cartridges. Item, card notifying a dental point this morning. And couldn't make it. I have to cross that bridge work when I find it. Uh, yeah. Well, that's all there is. No brown envelope. No, I wouldn't have a brown envelope. Never use that color. It makes me look sallow. You're not much help. Well, do something, Fatty. Something. 
Why don't you just send all my envelopes to the lab and get the glue analyzed? I had a horse last week to drop dead in the far turn, and I... Diamond Detective Agency, detecting done by day or night, and holidays, if the fee is right. Diamond, this is Sergeant Fraser. Lieutenant Levinson there? Uh, yeah, he's here in the briefcase for you all. Thanks. Levinson. Fraser here. No, oh, hi. That express company robbery that happened this morning, we picked up the getaway car. Thought you'd want to know right away. Yeah, thanks, Sergeant. Car abandoned? Yeah, seemed to be pretty smashed up, too. Front end all banged in. Gray Coop with Connecticut Place. Okay, hold it for a route. Wait a minute. Gray Coop could... Rick, that car you banged into this morning. Gray Coop, Connecticut Place? That's right. Why? I'll tell you in a minute. Sergeant. Yeah? Get with the traffic bureau. I want everything on a collision at Madison and 43rd. Everything, including a weather report. Rain, followed by Saturday and Sunday. And Fraser. Yes, sir. The driver of the car. Get out a warrant for... Rick, what did the driver give her name as? Uh, Markham. Dora Markham, housewife. Dora Markham, Sergeant. Probably phony, but make it out anyway. I'll be back at the office soon. Rick, this accident of yours is something big. You should see my repair bill. Well, shut up and listen, will you? This is serious. Early this morning, the Huxley Express Company was robbed of $600,000. Wow. Yeah, now get this. The car you smashed into was the getaway car. Whoever this dame is who was driving, she's tied in somehow with a gang who pulled the job. Mm-hmm. Well, Fatty, this is all very enlightening, but go a little farther. Why did this Scannell guy come here looking for a brown envelope? I don't know. But I'm going back to the precinct. This is the first break we've had on this case. And you better keep your eyes open and that gun in your shoulder holster. Can't. Crushes my camels every time I stoop over. Oh, Rick, for the last time, this is no joking matter. For some reason, that gang thinks you have a brown envelope. That envelope means enough to them to kill for it. Ricky, my boy, up to now, you've been shot with luck. Don't crowd it. <laughs> Before we continue with Richard Diamond, here are a few words about smoking enjoyment. Here's the one sensible test of cigarette mildness. Smoke only camels for 30 days. Pack after pack, you'll enjoy the full, rich flavor that's found only in camels. And through steady smoking, the only sensible way to judge a cigarette. You'll see for yourself how mild camels are. How well camels agree with your throat. In a test supervised by noted throat specialists, hundreds of men and women from coast to coast smoked only camels for 30 days. The throat specialist made more than 2,000 careful weekly examinations of the throats of these smokers, and they reported not one single case of throat irritation due to smoking camels. That's conclusive proof of camels' mildness. Start tonight to make your own camel 30-day mildness test. Make camels your steady smoke, and you'll discover just why camel is America's most popular cigarette by billions. How mild, how mild, how mild, how mild, how mild can a cigarette be? Smoke camels and see. And now, back to Richard Diamond, Private Detective, starring Dick Powell. <laughs> Up until now, as the man said, I had been shot and shot at with luck. I was in the middle of something, but didn't know what. After Levinson left, I sat and stared out the window. It didn't work any harder than that until the phone rang. Diamond Detective Agency, we try to please... Hello? 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 Oh, well, maybe it was the wrong number. Or maybe it was somebody wanting to be sure I was here. I felt like a new clay pipe in the shooting gallery waiting for the sailors on Saturday night. It was a nice little office, but I suddenly didn't like it. I thought I'd go ask Helen about the piano sooner. I liked that idea. So I got up, packed my briefcase, shoved my stuff back in it, and as I zipped it shut, my hand felt a piece of paper stuck underneath it. It was the brown envelope. I got to work on it, and inside was a baggage check, and written on the back of it were two words. Blue duck. I was just getting... Don't bother, Mr. Diamond. Just give it to me. Well, hello, Dora Markham, housewife. I'm not as stupid as Paul Spinell, Mr. Diamond. Also, I'm a better shot. Well, he wasn't too bad. 
Got my wastebasket right between you. You talk too much. Get up, turn around, and take off your coat. Oh, do I have to? It's so pretty. My shirt's wrinkled on account of the rain. And take I... it off, or the coroner will cut it off. Oh, they should have sent you in the first place, Dora. You're much more convincing. Huh? Okay, it's off. Look, you're a, you're a housewife. There's a button loose on the left sleeve, and I... The, uh, trousers? Oh. Oh, now, Dora. The door is closed, and there's a silencer on this gun. I love the silence and noise of the detective who tried to move in on a... off diamond. Yes, ma'am. Hmm. Gypsy Rose Diamond. A pretty girl is like a melody. How have you ever lived this long? Fresh air, hard work, and green vegetables. Let me show you my diet list. I have it right Stay now. Stay away from that desk. Now, hand me your coat and trousers. Thank you. Turn around. Walk to the wall with your hands up. Up high. Hmm. At uh, the next tone signal, Diamond, your phone is being disconnected. Oh, uh, Dora, you're wonderful. I could go for a strong girl like you, and I would, too, if you didn't have that... Well, you could have said goodbye. <laughs> Richard Diamond, detective, with no pants. A private eye welcoming his privacy. I looked for the brown envelope, gone with my wardrobe. I looked at the telephone. Alexander Graham Bell couldn't have fixed it with Don Amici handing in the pliers. I peered out into the corridor, no one in sight, not even an insurance agent or a typewriter salesman. This alone was making history. I wondered if I could trot through the streets to the 5th Precinct, pretending to be a cross-country runner. Uh, no, not in blue silk shorts. I sat down and waited. And waited. And waited. I tried telepathy. Helen, I thought, come and get me and bring me a pair of trousers. Helen, I concentrated. It's Rick. The rain must have done something to Helen's antenna, so I concentrated on Walt. Walt, I thought, and Walt walked in. Well, you're a more sensitive type than I thought, Walt. Did you bring me some trousers? Some trousers? What's coming off here? <laughs> The straight line was too easy, so I passed it up. I told Walt about Dora the housewife and the brown envelope and the baggage check inside it. Anything else? Yeah, two words written on the back of the check. said, uh, Blue Duck. About that time, Dora interrupted me with her old clothes campaign. Blue Duck? Never heard that before. Blue Duck. Well, there used to be a Blue Duck nightclub in the West 20s, a real hog wallop. Closed up a year ago for selling the miners. Keep talking. All right, all right. But I'll be at living in a minute. The only thing I know about it is that it was run by Sis Madison and her husband. It was quite a joint thing. Hey. Yeah? Sis Madison. That's Dora Markham, housewife with a lemon rent and a new name. This begins to add up. That guy you killed in your office used to work for Sis Madison. There were three people spotted in that Huxley Express robbery. Dave and two guys. Oh, could have been Sis Madison, her husband, and Skinnell. This is very interesting. I'll tell you something else very interesting. What? I'm freezing. Or is that only interesting to me? Wait a minute. Fraser. Yes, sir. There's a cleaning and pressing shop halfway up the block. Go see if Mr. Diamond's coat and pants are there. Dre Tweed, name in the inside pocket. Get with it, son. Cleaning shop, Diamond's coat and pants. Yes, sir. How did you know, Fatty? Oh, sheer genius. Besides, it's logical. I don't think she'd want to haul them all over town or be seen stuffing them into a garbage can. Why not? That's where I got them. Blue duck. I hope you're sure that's what you read on the back of that check. I'm sure, but it's been closed for years. Well, we're going down there and open it up. No. No what? No pants. Don't be so modest. I'm not modest. I'm cold. I... Stand over there. That's it. Come in. Hey, watch it, Lieutenant. It's just me. Okay, Fraser. Got Mr. Diamond's clothes? Yes, sir. I'll press night, too. Another ten minutes, the guy would have brought him up here himself. Really? Yeah, the lady said her father was waiting for him. Her father? Walt, give me a gun. This gang will stoop to anything. 
Ten minutes later, we were on our way to an exit nightclub, the Blue Duck. I sat in front of Levinson's car, trying not to wrinkle my well-pressed trousers. We pulled up half a block from the one-time nightclub. Where are all the cars? I thought this would be a bigger party. The place isn't a blue duck, it's a dead duck. Uh, maybe it's a bigger party than it looks. Where are you looking? For a bright cop, Patty, you're a little dull. But everything points to this little bistro, so we'll just... I know. Take a gander at the duck. <laughs> gander at the duck. <laughs> I heard it the first time. Yeah. Tell me, Walter, 600000 Is there a reward? A reward? Why, you... Keep your voice down, officer, while you tell me who put you on to the blue duck and Sis Matson. Who got shot at, stripped, humiliated, wrecked? Who split 50-50 with the police pension fund? Uh... Should have brought your briefcase. You are a businessman. Come on. Dead duck. I don't think this joint was ever alive. Maybe they went to a movie. After all, a housewife is entitled to a little recreation, and I. No way. This place has been closed for years. Nobody here. We want to look around a little. There ain't nobody here. I told you. I. We'll come in anyway. Walt, get the old guy to turn on some lights. Ain't no lights. I... Must be some lights, Pop. How do you get your reading done? I spend my time minding my own business, Sonny. Not a bad idea for you either. You don't mean you think I'm Snoopy? Nothing to see here. Now get out. We're police officers, Pop. Now find the lights and stop talking so much. What do you want anyway? Lights. Didn't you hear what the man said? All right. Here's the switch. Hmm. Place looks like it was never open. What'd you expect, dancing girls? You're pretty fresh, you know it. I got half a mind to run you in. Now, hold it, Walt. You don't want him. You said it. Uh, who pays you, Pop? I don't know. They mail it to me. Yeah, sure. What's under those stairs? Tables and chairs. What's on the second floor? Nothing. Used to be the office. Oh, I'd like to take a look at it. Come on, Walt. Okay. Come on, Pop. I'll stay here. You'll come with us. It's bad for my heart climbing up and down stairs. You don't think maybe there's somebody in the office, do you, Pop? The place is empty, I tell you. Ah, uh, come on. Keep up with us, Pop. Are you scared of your heart? I know. Scared of anything else? No. Well, I am. Hold it. What, Walt? I heard something. Rat. Maybe. Walt, get out. Rat, huh? Yeah, I guess that fits. Who's upstairs, Pop? I don't know. I told you. They're going to get him, whoever it is. You might as well start talking. I don't want no trouble. Now, look, you... Walt, are... well, well, start firing up toward that landing. Keep him busy. I'll try to get beside the staircase. Yeah. For Pete's sake, shoot high. You figure it's Sis Matson and her husband? Yeah. Now, start firing. High toward the landing. I started crawling under Walt's fire toward the stairs. I was getting sore. First, the Sif Matson steals my pants, and now she makes me muss them up. Fifteen snail crawls later, I was beside the staircase and had a good view of the landing. I could see the man who must be Sif's husband crouched down and firing toward Walt. I raised up. Matson, drop it. Okay, pal. Good shot, Rick. Yeah, but not good enough. All right, Matson, stop shooting. Drop the gun. You've had it. And come on down here. That's a good boy. Now, where's your wife, Matson? Who? Sis. Sis Matson. I don't know who you're talking about. Your wife, Matson. Come on, don't stall. Look, you hit me. Get me to a hospital. Huh? I'm hurt bad. Did you hear him say anything, Walt? Yeah, but I can't make it out. Look, you guys, this ain't legal. You've got to get me to a doc. Might be able to understand him if he talked about sis, though. Yeah, what about it, Matson? Look, I don't know. Get me to a doc. I'll talk later. You'll talk now. You'll lay right there until you do. All right. The car pulled up outside. See the lights through the window? Yeah. I'm quiet. Sis, get out! What? Hold it, honey. Cover, Walt. What is it? Diamond's the name, sis. So maybe you don't recognize me with my pants on. Rico. What have you done to him? Only a flesh wound, but he thinks he's bleeding to death. Ah, nice suitcase you got there, sis. And it was. When I opened it, I half expected to find a collection of men's trousers. But instead, I found stacks of my favorite color, green. 
You know, most ducks have only one bill. But lying on the floor of the blue duck in a suitcase were 600,000 of them. It had been a colorful day. Gray weather, brown envelopes, blue ducks, and green money. Yes, Ellen? There wasn't any piano tuner here. Oh, that's too bad. Too bad? Mm-hmm. Listen to middle C. Off a full 30 seconds. I'll call a tuner tomorrow. Well, I'll call one. I know a dandy. 73 years old. Tune pianos for Caruso. Caruso. Who? Now, easy. You'll hurt Lanza's feelings. When you are in love... It's the loveliest night of the year. Tonight? Stars twinkle above, and you almost can touch them from here. Yeah, long arms. They're reaching. Words fall into rhyme. Anytime you are holding me near, when you are in love, it's the loveliest night of the year. Let's dance. Waltzing along in the blue, like a breeze drifting over the sand. Thrilled by the wonder of you and the wonderful touch of your hand. And my heart starts to beat. Like a child when a birthday is near. Oh, kiss me, my sweet. Is that an invitation? Oh, it's the loveliest night of the year. Like it? Yeah. What are you staring at? You? Flattering to me when you show up with your clothes to welfare. I think I'll kiss you. Oh, good is. You need a woman like me, Rick? There is no woman like you, Helen. I know it. But you better grab me while I'm available. <laughs> Dick Powell will return in just a minute. Here's a wonderful Christmas shopping tip. Give cartons of camels as Christmas gifts. Camel makes it easy for you with a special Christmas gift carton. It's beautifully designed in holiday colors and has a built-in greeting card right on top of the carton. Be sure to give plenty of camels this Christmas. It's America's most popular cigarette by billions. How mild, how mild, how mild, how mild, how mild can a cigarette be? Here's Dick Powell with a special message. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, every week the makers of Campbell cigarettes send thousands of packs of camels to military hospitals and veterans. That's to help show hospitalized men and women of the armed forces that folks at home haven't forgotten them. This week, the free packs of camels go to Veterans Hospital, Marion, Indiana, and Sheridan, Wyoming. U.S. Army Station Hospital, Camp Gordon, Georgia, and the U.S. Naval Hospital Ship, Repose. Now until next week, enjoy camels. I always do. Dick Powell can now be seen starring in the Universal International film You Never Can Tell. Tonight's transcribed adventure of Richard Diamond was written by Dick Quentin with music by Frank Worth. Our director was Nap Wolf. Virginia Gregg played the part of Helen Asher and Alan Reed was Lieutenant Levin. Others in the cast were Kay Stewart, Herb Butterfield, Herb Ellis, and Bob O'Connor. The fight is out and the pleasure's in when you smoke Prince Albert. It's specially treated not to bite your tongue. The fight is out and the pleasure's in. That's why pipe smokers will be delighted with Prince Albert for Christmas. The big one-pound tin of Prince Albert comes in a gaily designed holiday package that needs no wrapping. Just write your greeting on the built-in card and present Prince Albert to delighted pipe smokers.
Listen next week for another exciting adventure of Richard Diamond, starring Dick Powell. This is your FBI. The official broadcast from the files of the FBI follows immediately. Stay tuned. This program came to you from Hollywood. This is the American Broadcasting Company.